Now in your Bibles today, we're looking in Luke chapter number 16, the Gospel of Luke chapter number 16, and I want to begin reading at verse number 19. The Bible said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate, uh, at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and uh, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented, in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivedest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send to him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now, our Father, will you help us today? I confess every sin. Now, I'm preaching on a subject today that nobody likes to preach on, but I pray you'll help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Somewhere in the heart of the earth, as I speak to you, there are men and women and every soul that has come to the knowledge of the saving power of Jesus Christ but has rejected Him. They are burning in a literal hell today. Now, I know that in the day and hour which we live, hell's not popular. Hell's not preached on. Hell's not publicized. We live in a, what we'd like to call a kinder, gentler society where we're, well, it's cruel to say anything about hell. We'd rather love the sinner in and bring him in and make him feel one of us and just maybe he'll get saved. And my friend, let me say to you, that's why we're not seeing as many true conversions in our churches across this land is because we are failing to preach the truths about hell. Now let me say something. When a man preaches on hell, I don't think he ought to preach ugly. And I don't think he ought to preach like he's glad people's going there. No, sir. Hell is a real place. And hell has fire in it. We're going to look at that today. And I want to preach to you on this subject. What is hell like? What is hell like? Now you say, preacher, I'm listening to you on the radio today. And I'll just tell you up front, I don't believe in hell. I've been to the university. They've taught me better than that. I, I, I'm educated better than that. All right, now I want to say something to you. If you're right, then, then we ain't out anything. I'm just out some money for some radio time. But if I'm right and you die, you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. And let me say to you, I am right and the Bible's right. Now here's a story. This is not a parable. I want you to understand that Luke 16 is not a parable. For in parables, Jesus did not call names. In Luke 16, here you have a story. And I want to say this. Lazarus did not go to heaven because he was poor. 
and the rich man go to hell because he was rich. Now, if you read it that way, you're not correctly interpreting the text. Lazarus apparently got saved, I believe, later in life. And I'll tell you why I believe that. Because the Bible said, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David said, I've never seen the righteous going, but Lazarus was a beggar. So that tells me that Lazarus got saved late in life, and he didn't have anything. He had ruined his life probably in sin. And he was laid at the rich man's gate full of sores. Man, he was already about to die. But he got saved. And the Bible does not say whether the rich man ever gave him any crumbs or not, but uh, it, it don't appear that he did. And the rich man would say, I'm not going to have a thing to do with that sinner. I'm not going to have a thing to do with that man later. I'm better than he is. Why, I go to church every Sunday. And I, I, I'm, I'm a member of the Sunday school class and the moose club and the goose club and the flea club and the, and the tiger club. And I, I'm, I'm on this committee and that committee and those committees. And uh, so uh, the rich man thought he's better if they come a dying day. Can I say that every one of us is going to die? As of the day I'm preaching this, I've lived 20,070 days today. 20,070 days. That's how many days I've lived on earth. Now, I look at every day. It's a brand new chapter in life. And I know, I was sitting there thinking about it this morning. I thought, you know, I don't have 20 more thousand days to live. I do not have 20 more thousand. My, my mama lived 27,201 days is what she lived on earth at 74-year-old. So I... Uh, I know I don't have 20 more thousand days that put me over 100 years old. But you know, the days I do have, I want to spend them for Jesus Christ. I sat last night and just meditated and thought, why do I do what I do? And I do what I do because I love the Lord. And then if you love the Lord, you'll love people. Amen. And so I love you today. I've never met you, but I love you. And I don't want to see you go to hell. I preach to people that have walked out of service. I, I remember my cousin, the last message you ever heard me preach in person as far as I know I preached on hell in the church on July the 10th 1994 my cousin walked out matter of fact I had two cousins in that same service walked out lost one of them died one of them is still living but I, I want to say something I want to say something I don't enjoy and I do not assign people to hell that's God's business but I want to say to you that we'd better wake up preachers and churches and, and we'd better realize instead, and I, and I just want to say this, and I, I don't want to be ugly, but I hear preachers say this a lot. I hear missionaries use this a lot. And I, I wish you wouldn't use this term, fellas. We are not salesmen. I want you to understand that. We've been taught that we're supposed to present the gospel like a shoe salesman. You're, you're wrong about that. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was not a salesman. Now, Paul did try to persuade people. But we're trying to persuade people to keep them out of hell. We're not trying to sell anything so that we can get our numbers up. And I'm afraid it's all about numbers and statistics to go in a prayer letter, and it's not like that at all. There are people you may have to work with for years before they get saved. And, uh, and, and you may have to sow the seed for a long time before they get saved. I used to hear the late Dr. Bobby Robertson and he'd talk about how that he would get under a burden for somebody and they'd go to the door and they'd go back to the door and they'd just keep on going back. And that's how that man got saved. That's how my mama got saved in 1975. And those men from the Maple Springs Baptist Church just kept on going back. Now we get into this message today. Number one, I, I want to say this to you, that hell is real. Hell is a real place. You say, preacher, I, I don't believe in hell. I just, I just don't believe in that. Well, let me say this to you. Uh, you know what? I can say all I want to that I don't believe in uh, Utah. I've never been in the state of Utah. I've been far west. I've been is is Montana. But I could say I don't believe in Utah all my life. But that don't change the fact that Utah is a United States state. That don't change the fact that Salt Lake City uh, is in Utah. I could say I don't believe in Salt Lake City, but it's still there. You understand? And just because you say I don't believe in hell, don't make hell go away. Now in, in Abraham's day, here's what happened. Uh, there was paradise was on one side, hell was on the other. And, and the reason that uh, the, <clears throat> God used Abraham here to talk to them, and it was kind of unusual that Abraham would, would talk from the dead. Not many people did that. Maybe Abraham and Samuel and, uh, and Elijah and Moses are the only ones I believe that ever talked from the dead. And, and, and Abraham did this, I believe, because this man was a Jew, and the Jews require sign. And I, and I, but, but I believe when this man got to hell, I believe, that, I believe he saw Abraham over on paradise side. Now, we believe that when Jesus died on the cross and rose again the third day, the first day of the week, that, that heaven, because he, he, he led captivity captive, he preached to the captives. Jesus went down there into paradise and preached the gospel to them, and they all went to heaven. 
And so I believe this is, this is the Bible said hell hath enlarged herself without measure. I believe hell's enlarged herself to where paradise used to be. I believe that's a, that's a personal belief, but I believe hell, and hell's in the heart of the earth. There's no doubt about that. The Bible said in verse number 23, the Bible said, And in hell he lift up his eyes. This, this rich man was not planning on going to hell. I want you to understand that. This rich man was not planning on going to hell. He was not. This rich man was probably one of the finest citizens in his community. This rich man probably gave money to his synagogue. This rich man was probably involved in the community. And I want to say there's a lot of people today that are community-oriented. But listen, good works will not take you to heaven. I want you to understand that. And when you die, you're going to have a reality that hell is a real place. Uh, Some of you liberals that mock God. And you make fun of God, and you make fun of the Bible, and you change the laws of God or try to. Let me tell you something. One second in hell, you're going to realize God's real. The Bible said that every knee should bow and every tongue confess, and you may not confess Him here. The university may have taught you and brainwashed you that there's no God. That's a lie of the devil. And I tell you what us Baptist preachers need to do. We need to get on fire again and preach on hell. You young boys need to preach on hell. Amen. You need to preach on it in your Bible colleges. You need to preach on it in, on the streets and the jails and the nursing homes. You need to preach on it in the pulpits, on the radio. You need, and I'm not talking about being ugly again. I'm just talking about we need to preach on hell again in our churches. Uh, you want to get a good soul winning program started, preach on hell. Let people get a burden. Not a burden for a bunch of numbers and statistics and gimmicks. But let people get a burden for their family going to hell without God, and it'll change things. Amen. Hell is a real place. This man had a reality. He woke up in a real place. You know, there was a contrast. The beggar died, and we know that the angels come. When a man dies, if he's saved, the angels come, and they carry that man to heaven. I believe they carry him with great speed. I believe there's a whole band of them comes. Because I tell you what, I believe the devil's standing right there. And he'd, he'd snatch your soul if he could. And I believe God said, uh-uh, Satan. I'm going to send my angels. You're guarded all the way to heaven. Ain't that something make you want to shout? But in turn, sometimes what the Bible does not say, and I'm not adding to the Bible. But the Bible said the rich man also died. The Bible gave no account, but I, I, I kind of wonder if the demons of hell don't surround a man when he dies lost, and the demons usher him right on into hell. I don't know about that. But see, see, there was a contrast. This beggar died. The Bible does not even say the beggar had a funeral. The Bible don't say he had a funeral. But the Bible said the rich man died and was buried. This rich man had people stand great orators, and, and boy, they, they, they gave great speeches and told how good he was and how much money he gave and, and what committees he served on and all this kind of thing. And all the time they were doing that. This man was burning in hell. My friend, listen, when you die, before you ever get to the funeral home, you're burning in hell. And while somebody stands and tells how good you was and, and all this kind of stuff, and listen, uh, you're burning in hell. Can I say this? There's been many people deceived about how to get saved. Many people believe that water baptism will take them to heaven. I, I, they say, I was baptized as an infant. That has nothing to do with you. I would not. There's no way in the world you, you couldn't pay me to baptize a baby. No, sir. And I'll say this. I ain't got nothing wrong with baby dedications. But you better be real careful with that, that that baby don't grow up and its mom and daddy said, we dedicated you to God when you was little. Listen, you can dedicate a baby all you want to, but I tell you right now, that baby still has to grow up and get saved, okay? Don't, don't forget that, okay? Let's be careful in what we do. I, I, I know we're wanting to dedicate him to God. We want to be spiritual. But I tell you, the best way to do it, instead of dedicating your baby to God in public and praying a prayer over now, and I'm not, again, I'm not against that. Please, I'll get a thousand letters. Oh, Catherine's against baby. I didn't say that. But I'll say this, you better be careful with that. Instead of doing that, mom and daddy, live right. Train him up right. Bring him to church. Teach him to tithe. Teach him there's a hell. Teach him there's a heaven. You see what I'm saying? I had a young, I had a couple going to join the church where I pastored one time, and uh, so I always, that that last, I always started meeting with people before they joined the church. I, I didn't just publish the doors open because you, you, you can get in trouble over that. And uh, in this day and time, there's a lot of legalities. You, you, better, you better make sure you know who's joining your congregation. And uh, I called them in and we began to talk and they had a little son there. And the mama, she checked out all right and daddy checked out all right. And I got to the son and he's wanting to join too. And he just didn't, he didn't give me a good answer about salvation. And I, I stopped. I, I said to the mom and daddy, I said to them, uh, it's okay for you, y'all to join the church. 
But I, I don't believe he's ready to join the church. He needs to get saved first. And now that mom and daddy did not fight me on that issue. They agreed with me. You know what? About three or four weeks later, their son got saved in the service. Now let me tell you something. Had I joined that little boy up in the church, and I don't, I don't remember how old he was. Maybe he was 8, 9, 10, 11 years. I don't know how old he was. But had I joined that little boy up in the church, he might have died and went to hell being a church member. My friend, listen, being a church member won't take you to heaven. Why, if being a church member would take you to heaven, I'd join every church in the country. Why, listen, friend, if, if good works would take you to heaven, I'd work night and day. That won't take you to heaven. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus died for your sin, and He rose again. And all you have to do is accept that and ask Him to save you and believe in Him with all your heart. Hell is real. You, you better get in your mind. Hell is real, friend. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what the compromising preachers of our day tell you. I don't care what the new modernistic Bibles tell you. Oh, they'll tell you that the, that the Greek and Hebrew word is the word grave for hell. Now, I know a little bit of Greek and Hebrew, and I'm going to tell you right now, God wrote our Bible in English, amen? The majority of our studying ought to be English words and not Greek and Hebrew. And I, do, I do study Greek and Hebrew words in case you think I'm just ignorant. But I'll tell you right now, uh, uh, hell is not the grave. Uh, there, there's, there's a whole difference in the grave. I can go to my mom and daddy's grave. I can go there right now. But uh, laying in that grave is just the pod. The peas have been shelled out. They're going to be with God, friend. Amen. They're not there. And I was over there not long ago, and the Holy Ghost told me, said, get out of here. They're not in there. Amen. I'm not saying I won't never go back to the graveyard now. I didn't say that. I just, I just saying they're not there. Amen. Hell is real. Number two, I want to give you this. Hell has fire. All you see, see, you got some people believe, well, yeah, I, I agree with you, preacher. Hell's a real place, but it ain't got no fire in it. You know, the, the rock stars, uh, 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 they sing songs and, and, and kind of uh, uh, go to the fact of we're going to have a big party in hell. There's no party in hell, friend. There's no party in hell. There's no liquor in hell. There's no drink in hell. The Bible said the rich man begged for one, one, one drop of water. There is fire in hell. All oh, you say, preacher, we believe in hell, but we don't believe in any fire in it. Well, listen, hell without fire wouldn't be hell, would it? I want to tell you something, there's fire in hell, literal fire. Fire represents the judgment of God Almighty. And I say this to you, when you reject God on this earth, what you do on this earth depends on where you're going to be in eternity. What you do on this earth depends on what, where you're going to be in eternity. And friend, when you reject God on this earth, God has no choice but to let you go to hell without Him. You're there without the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something, it'd be awful to be in fire. I don't like fire. I really don't like fire. I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'm scared of fire. I, I'll be honest with you, I, I remember me and my brother, we, we, we had no comprehension of what fire could do. And we had this idea, we, we had to, uh, we'd play fire department. And we'd stack packs of leaves up, piles of leaves up, and we'd sound on, we'd set them leaves on fire. We'd get some matches, and we would, uh, and and we'd, we'd set, and we'd play fire department, and we'd sound the alarm. Boy, we'd go out there with sticks and beat them out until Mama called up with us, and Mama said, "Boys, said you quit that. Said you'll set the whole house on fire. You'll burn the whole neighborhood down. I mean, she or, or, or you'll burn the place down." She she was right, and we didn't comprehend what fire would do. Fire will destroy. But the only thing in hell is it destroys you, but you never die. You're ever dying in hell. Did you know what the Bible called it? The Bible called the lake of fire. Now, you're going to be brought out of hell, brought before the white throne judgment, and you're going to answer for every sin you ever did in hell. And then you're going to be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death, you see. And uh, you, you, you're, heading for, you're heading for really, it's not the second hell, but it's the, second, it's the lake of fire. Amen. We, we really don't have our doctrine altogether right when we say a man's going to spend eternity in hell. man's not going to spend eternity in hell. He's going to be in hell. Then he's going to be white thrown judge. Then he's going to be cast in the lake of fire. And the lake of fire, I believe, is worse than hell. Now, read that in the Bible. I'm not preaching new doctrine. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. But we use hell because, I mean, that's what, that's what Jesus used. Amen. And I guess it's all the same word. Amen. Same thing. So, so, but anyway, a man, man goes to hell without God. And a man burns, man's never getting out of there. He's going to be brought out and judged, but he's going to be cast right back in the fire. And then the devil's going to be there, and every demon's going to be there. Can you imagine being in eternity with the devil and all his demons? You know, fire's in hell. Man's ever burning in hell. Can you, can you imagine that? I, am, I think about the greatest message I ever heard in my life was given to our family in probably 1977. 
And uh, I wasn't saved. I think it put me under. We still use that message quite often here in our ministry. By a man by the name of Dr. Ed Ballou over in Tennessee. And Ed Ballou was my friend right before uh, he passed away. Me and him, me and him became friends. And I remastered uh, that message for Dr. Ballou and sent it to him on CD. And uh, Ed Ballou told a story in that message on hell that I believe here is worth repeating. Uh, Ed Ballou said I, uh, Ed Ballou was a truck driver before he uh, preached all over the country and pastored and all that. And so Ed Ballou was driving a truck one night. He said we was coming out of a large southern city. And he said we was in a convoy of trucks. And he said there was a young man that just got to passing all of us. He was just a two-lane highway. And he was showing off, you know, man, he could drive that thing. And he was just moving along. And he said we didn't go but a few miles. And the truck started slowing down. And when I got there, I realized that there had been an accident. And he said that young man had lost control of that truck and went down in an, in, in an embankment and the cab had flipped back up over top. The trailer was laying on its side and the cab of the truck had flipped back up over top of the trailer and was laying on the trailer. He said when we got to the man, the man really didn't appear to be all that hurt except for the fact that his arms were pinned down. One of them was. He had one free arm and his, his other arm was pinned down in the seat and his feet was pinned in. And... Uh, uh, somebody told him, said, we'll have you out of here in just a minute. We'll get you out. And they started working with him. And uh, all of a sudden, somebody said, uh, said uh, uh, I, I smell smoke. And so a little fire began to break out, and it broke out there in the cab. And the young man had a leather jacket on. That man said, hey, said, there's fire in here. said, my feet's on fire. And uh, so they started trying to put it out. And the, more they, and the more they put it out, the, 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 the more the fire grew. And, and that young man got to waving that hand with that one hand with that leather jacket on trying to put that fire. All of a sudden, that fire caught that leather jacket on fire. And then somebody else said, uh, said hey, I, I smell gas, uh, diesel. And all of a sudden, those gas tanks on that uh, truck began to, began to burn. And, and the people had to get back. They couldn't get the man out. And they had to go back up the bank and they began to explode in the fire. And you could see that man in there beating that fire, trying to beat that. And, and he was screaming, help me, help me. I'm on fire. Somebody do something. I'm on fire. Help me. And he looked around. There was a state trooper standing there by that time. And that man looked at that highway patrolman and he said, shoot me, shoot me. I'm on fire. Somebody help me. And they said they stood there helpless. They could not get that man out. That fire spread all over that truck. And it exploded. And that man died saying, help me, help me. I'm on fire. Help me. Somebody shoot me. Do something. I'm on fire. And as the fire died down, and it was, one man looked at another one and said, it's all over now. And Brother Baloo said, I thought, oh no. It's not all over. If that man wasn't saved, he went to hell. And he's in hell right now. And you know what? That man's still in hell right now. And I, I, I believe you go to hell exactly the way you die on earth. I believe that man's in hell right now saying, Somebody help me. Somebody shoot me. Somebody, somebody help me. I'm on fire. That's what they're saying in hell right now. Friend, they're not having a party. They're not playing rock music. They're not, they're not having immoral relationships. They're saying, I'm burning. I'm on fire. Help me. Oh, somebody help me. Help me. I'm on fire. Somebody get me out. Help me. And I believe, you know what I believe? I believe people in hell's calling the names of their loved ones. Now listen, this is a sobering fault, man. If this don't wake you up, I don't know what will. I mean, we live in a time of a, almost a seared conscience in our churches. Uh, we put $5 in the missions offering and say, man, we're going to send a missionary to Africa. We're doing our job. Wait a minute. Whoa, hold it. There ain't none of us doing our job. We got family and friends living on the same street, living in the same community, and when they die without God, they're going to be saying, help me, help me, help me, I'm on fire, help me, get me out, help me, Ricky, help me, Ricky, come, do something, you're a preacher, help me, get me out. That's what they're going to be saying. And the book of Ezekiel says that the blood's going to be on our hands. My friend, I've got, I, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I got blood on my hands right now. God told me to go see my cousin three or four weeks before he died. And his, my, my aunt told my cousin, said, you need to get right with God. His mama did. You know what he told his mama? He said, Mama, I'm going to hell with the rest of them. That's what he said. Three or four weeks later on my wedding anniversary day, they found him dead. Oh, I've got blood on my hands today, friend. I got blood on my hands. I promise you, I've got blood on my hands. I remember I was living 
in Glade Valley, North Carolina. I'll never forget it. There was somebody dying just out the road. God told me one day, he said, you go witness to that person. You go witness to him. And I put it off and I put it off. And one day that person died and went out into eternity. And, oh, I've got blood on my hands, friend. If that person went to hell, i got blood on my hands today. I'm telling you, there's fire in hell. You better wake up and realize there's fire in hell today, friend. There's fire. The Bible said in verse number 24, the Bible said, and he cried. I, I, I didn't preach to you anything false. They're crying in hell. Help me. Help me. I'm on fire. Do something. Get me out. Help me. They're crying. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Boy, he didn't ask for much, did he? Just one drop of water, one drop. We use thousands of drops of water a day. He said, for I am tormented in this what? Flame. Oh, friend, anybody that tells you that there's no fire in hell, they're lying to you. Any organization, any religion that tells you there's no fire in hell, they're lying to you. This King James Bible says there's fire in hell. Brother, there is fire in hell. We know of men that have went out begging and screaming. And I believe this. I believe you die exactly the way you live. I believe that. Dr. Stennett Ballou taught me that. I, I, I believe that. And let me say this to you. I believe if they didn't give people drugs on the hospital bed, I, I, I believe this. I believe you'd see more people going out to meet, meet uh, 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 their destiny. Uh, I, I, you see, in other words, it's like this. I, when a saved man dies, I had a friend of mine, a preacher friend of mine, and uh, boy, he was suffering. He was in awful pain. He got in a really bad shape before he died. But just before he died, he told his wife, said, do you see him? She said, what is it, honey? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you see the angels? Do you see them? The angels are here. And, oh, my friend, you know what? And he held on and he waited and, and then, then he died. He died a little bit about, about a day later or something. But he is seeing it. You say, did he really? I believe he did. But on the other side of that, I believe when a man dies lost, I believe if they could take the drugs and all that away from a man, I believe you'd see that man say, Hey, my feet's on fire. Man, I'm burning. I'm on fire. I'm going out of here. I'm on fire. I hesitate to tell this story because I realize that some of this man's family probably is listening to me on the radio. I did not know this man. I want to say this to you, and you're not going to know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to call a name. But I, but I, I, I would say to you, I only tell you what I know and what I was told as a young boy. I was just a kid myself. I probably wasn't even saved at that time. I remember meeting this man one time, and it was 1971, 72, somewhere in that area. I had to be six, seven years old. I only met the man once. I only met him one time in my life, but I remember the story. This man was a drunk. He could not escape alcohol. He could not escape liquor. He could not leave it alone. This man's daddy was a multi-millionaire. And I mean, listen, when you had millions of dollars in the 70s, you had money. It ain't like today. I mean, he, he probably, he, he'd probably been close to uh, way on up there today in money. This, but this man got sick. And the, and the daddy of this man was a very rich man, very influential man. And this man, this, the man's daddy approached the doctor. And he said, if you'll heal the man, I'll give you a million dollars. You heal him. And there's no doctor on earth could do that. And that man's laying on the hospital bed dying. And back then, those days, they didn't give you all the drugs that they give you now. I'm not, I'm not putting that man in hell. I'm just telling you how he died on his hospital bed. He said, somebody, get me some water. Pour it on me. My feet's on fire. My feet's on fire. Help me. Help me. Somebody, get me some water. Pour it on me. I'm on fire. Friend, I don't believe in hell like I say I do. And I don't believe you believe in hell like you say you do. I'll tell you why I don't believe that. If we believed in hell like we say we do, we'd quit worrying about numbers. We'd quit worrying about our churches swelling. I mean, brother, we'd get out here and we'd go to the center and worry about their salvation. More important than filling a number and putting it in some kind of bulletin. There's a man going to hell. There's a woman going to hell. There's a teenager going to hell. Never forget it. When I was pastoring a church and I always believed things ought to be decently and in order and I wasn't trying to be mean. A lot of people thought I was mean, but, but I fear the Lord. I reverence the church. I, I, I fear God. And there was one, one afternoon we had rented a building to start a church in, and one afternoon there was a young boy. And I sure hope this young boy got saved. I hope he did. There was a young boy. Uh, we drove up, and he was skate, skateboarding in our parking lot. And, and I just didn't think that was appropriate for Sunday evening, people coming into church. And so I went out there and I said, hey, buddy. And I, I called him aside. I said, uh, listen, I said, we've rented this for church. And, and I said, I, I'd appreciate it if you, if you wouldn't do that. And I was real nice. And he was nice to me. And I began to talk to the young man. And I, I began to invite him into the church. And he never came to church. But, but, you know, I said all that to say this. You know what? There's going to be young people 
uh, that's going to die lost. And I hope that boy got saved. I hope he did. But let me, let me say this to you. Now, he didn't, he didn't go to hell because he skateboarded in my parking lot. I want you to understand that. But I'm just simply saying I want to reach young people too. Listen, friend, we, we say, oh, we want to do everything we can to reach the youth. Have we told them about Jesus? I'll tell you what, if you start believing in hell, your young people won't play basketball on Wednesday nights while you're preaching. If you start believing in hell, you're going to want to get them young people in the main service and let them sit under the preacher. Amen, amen. Listen, friend, we, we do so much to take the conviction away. We, we, we don't believe in the conviction of the Holy Ghost like we used to. I mean, listen, you, you put people in a setting, you put young people in a teaching setting, and that's not preaching. And the Holy Ghost is not as, not, not as present there to convict from sin. Oh, don't, don't, you're saying that preacher, I don't believe that. The Bible said, how shall they hear without a preacher? I'm preaching to King James, amen. I'm telling you that we better major on getting people out of hell. We'd better major on, you say, God told Peter, he said, if you all follow me, he said, I'll, said, I'll make you fishers of men. Brother, we'd better fish for souls. You know what Nimrod was? Nimrod in the Bible was a mighty hunter. Nimrod hunted the souls of men. Nimrod wanted people to follow him. Nimrod was a wicked man. I believe he was a type of the Antichrist. And I believe the Antichrist is going to be a fisher of souls. But let me, let me, say, let me say this to you, friend. And I try to say it in the Spirit of the Lord. Let me tell you, we ought to fish for souls. My friend, hell today is a place of fire. Number three, can I say this? Hell is a place where you will cry for mercy. And I've already really dealt with that, but look at verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Let me tell you something. Did you know hell... My friend, is a place where you're going to beg for mercy. You say, I don't beg for anybody, for anything. You say, I don't need you Christians. You're weak and you're, uh, you're not really a real man. Some of you believe that garbage. Some of you believe that, that us Christians are not real men, that we're just weaklings because we believe in hell. I'm going to say one thing. This rich man probably thought the same thing. But I'll promise you one second after you get in hell, you'll start one smidgen of a second after you get in hell, you'll start begging for mercy. And friend, those not, there's no preacher can get you out then. There's no money can get you out. There's no person can get you out. There's nobody will get, listen, God has mercy on you on this side. You, you have allotted so many days. I've lived 20,070 days as of today. I don't know how many more days I may not ever live, 20,071. 20, 20, I may never live that many days. But I know where I'm going. I accepted Jesus Christ when I was 11 years old. And God has given me mercy. My sins are taken away. God took away my sin. He does not remember them. For I ask the Lord to save me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ died for your sin. He died to keep you out of hell. That's what He went to Calvary's cross for. And you have to accept that. You have to ask Him. The Bible said that if thou, talking about you, should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and if thou, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Not a low head profession to get mom off your back. Not a head profession to get your wife off your back. You better get serious, sir. You're sitting at, how, at home. And that church bus comes by every Sunday and gets your kids. You're drinking your liquor and watching your pornography. You're wicked as the devil and you know it. And I tell you in love because I love you. My friends, you ought to get right with God right now. You ought to fall down on your knees and get saved right now. Amen. You say, preacher, when's the time for me to get saved right now? I wouldn't wait another minute. I'd fall down by the radio. I'd beg for mercy right now. I'd beg God to save me. Hey, listen, you, you don't have the promise of one more minute. I don't have the promise of 20,071 days. No, I've lived 20,070 days as of today. I don't have the promise of 71, but I know if my heart stops right now, I know I'm going to heaven. My friend, listen, one, uh, one smidgen of a second, when you get into hell, you will start begging for mercy. There's kings that have went to hell. There's dictators that have went to hell. There is God deniers that have went to hell. There's liberals that have went to hell, and they have made fun of God. They've mocked God. They've blasphemed God on this side. But I promise you today, you say, what are they doing? They're begging for mercy in hell today. I mean the biggest liberal you can think of. The biggest compromiser you can think of. I mean, listen. Uh, 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 people that have made statements against the Bible. I, I believe it was uh, Voltaire. I believe it was made the statement. He said in a hundred years the Bible will be extinct. One hundred years from that very day, from the very room he made the statement, they were printing Bibles. 
I'm not going to say he went to hell, but I don't know. But I say this, if he went to hell without God for those many hundreds of years, he's been begging for mercy, friend. Oh, my friend, listen, there is no mercy in hell. God is just to send a man to hell. You say, well, my God won't send anybody to hell, sir. It ain't your God that does the judging. It's the God that created heaven and the earth. It's a God that wrote this book. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, listen, it, it's, it's not me making this stuff up. Matter of fact, I wouldn't make this stuff up. Matter of fact, if it was me, I wouldn't send anybody to hell. I, I don't think I could. But I'll tell you one thing God did. Oh, God God has no choice. I mean, you're, it's, it's just, my friend. Listen, I, 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 you know what? He was just asking for a little mercy. He wasn't even asking for a whole lot of mercy. This rich man, number four, I want you to notice this. Not only is hell real, there's fire in hell. They're begging for mercy. No, there's torments in hell. There are torments in hell. Look at verse number 23. The Bible said, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, with an S on the end of them. Oh, yes. Now, now let, me say, let, me, let me show you something. Did you know torments here in the Greek has the idea of one being tortured to divulge the truth? In other words, it'd be like this. It'd be like a man in the military getting captured by the enemy. And they would torture that man until he would tell them what they wanted to know. And I believe you're tortured in hell until you, ad- I, I, even when you admit that Jesus Christ is Lord. You liberals are going to admit that he's Lord. You, you may have hoodwinked the whole country and you, you, you may be dragging a whole country to hell with your liberalology and the Supreme Court changing laws and changing laws about abortion and changing laws about marriage. It still don't make them right. When you wake up in hell, you will confess there's a God. Philippians says you will. You'll bow your knee. You'll confess. You, I, I, believe, I believe Jesus Christ is confessed every minute in hell. I believe that. I believe there's somebody confessing Him all the time in hell. They're saying, Lord, you're right. I was wrong. Have mercy on me. And God's not there. He don't have mercy. Listen, God, God's not, God, 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 is, God knows what's going to hell. I'm, he's got control of it. But what I'm saying to you is that God's, God's not going to do that. You see, matter of fact, if you're lost, you're going to be brought out to the white throne judgment. I'm, I'm not going to be at the white throne judgment as, a, as, as being judged. I'm going to be there as a spectator. But can you imagine standing before a judge without an attorney? You see, Jesus Christ is your attorney right now. He'll take your case. You say, preacher, God wouldn't save me. I'm mean. I, I, I've killed somebody. Or I, I've raped somebody. I've, I, I, I've molested somebody. I, I've cheated somebody. God wouldn't. I mean, I, I met a fellow in jail. He got on dope and drugs and killed his own mama. I met him. And the man got saved in the jail. In the county jail, he got saved. I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? There's people who have done crimes and they were so drunk and dope, they don't know what they did. I mean, listen, man, I mean, listen, I mean, there's people who robbed stores and everything else. They don't even know they did it. And you know what? Uh, listen, they probably got shot and died and went to hell and didn't even realize it until they woke up in hell. Oh, my friend, every time I hear a siren, every time I think, were they, are they saved? Every time I hear about an accident, I heard about a tragic accident the other day. I heard about a tragic accident the other day. Oh, my friend, I don't know all about that. I, I don't know all about the accident, but I, I know this. I heard, about, I heard about somebody getting burned to death the other day. And my thoughts were, boy, if they died lost, they were burning physically, and they just dropped right off into hell just like that man was in that tractor and trailer. And they're saying, help me, help me, somebody, I'm on fire. Help me, help me. I want to ask you a question. The very wife that's under your roof, is she saved? Friend, you better start living right. The very husband that lives under your roof is his saved. Instead of fussing at him all the time, you better get on your knees and beg God. Your kids, you say, well, they say they're saved. I want to say this to you, friend, just because I, hey, listen, I, I could say I'm a car all I want to, but I'm not. I could say I'm an airplane pilot, but none of you'd ride with me. I could say I'm a doctor, but nobody let me do surgery on them. I could say I'm a plumber, but nobody's going to let me plumb your house. You better have more than they said they're saved. You better make sure. You better pray. You better get, You better ask God for your loved ones. I'm talking about in hell. They're begging for mercy and there's no mercy. They're going to stand before God. And I believe, I believe a sinner will give an account. Now, now I, I'm saved. I, I won't give an account of any of that. God's took my sin away. But I believe a lost man at the white throne judgment is going to give an account of every cuss word he's ever said. 
every cigarette he's ever smoked, every dirty deal he's ever done, every dope he's ever smoked, uh, every every fornication and adultery he's ever committed, every drop of alcohol he's ever drunk. He's going to give an account of every bit of that in hell. You know why? He's going to stand there without a lawyer. You don't want to die with that heavy load on you. See, hell's just a holding cell. You're headed for the white throne judgment. And the Bible said that judgment was so bad that the heavens and the earth ran from God on that day. Say, preacher, you're trying to scare me. Well, I'm telling you the truth. If You ought to be scared. Friend, if I was lost, I'd be scared. Well, you say, preacher, why'd you get saved for? Didn't want to go to hell. That's a pretty good excuse to me, ain't it you? Uh, uh, who in their right mind would want to uh, be in eternity and all, all eternity with hell and be in torments? The Bible said there's torments in hell. I believe every demon's going to be cast into hell. I believe the devil goes by every once in a while and just stirs hell up and laughs at him. I really, I, I believe he's got a wicked laugh. <laughs> I believe he goes by and said, ha, 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 yeah, you found out now, didn't you? I, I believe that. I believe he goes by and just torments him. I, I really believe that. Amen. I believe I can almost prove that in the verse in Isaiah. I, I believe the devil goes by and just stirs hell up and torments people in hell. I believe there's torments in hell. I believe that. Hell's not a picnic. Hell's, you better quit listening to these rock singers. Hey, you're not going to have a party in hell, young people. Somebody said, well, these young people, if you, and the devil teaches these young people, just kill yourself and it'll end it all. You have such a bad life. You ain't had a bad life on earth compared to hell. Young lady, you may have been, as a teenager, as a child, you may have been molested, raped, and everything else. But listen, you ain't had a bad life compared to if you pull that trigger and die and go to hell without God. Young man, you may think you have a bad life at home. Your mama may be mean to you. Your daddy may be mean to you. But listen, you pull that trigger, lost, and you're going to be in hell forever. You better not do that. I had a friend of mine. He's in heaven now. And I don't mind calling his name. His name was Joe Kowalski. And Joe was my friend. Me and Joe were friends for over 30-some years. And Joe told me how he got saved in Hudson, North Carolina, and he called a religious outfit that he was affiliated with, and they said, we'll make you an appointment for 10 o'clock in the morning. And Joe didn't need an appointment for 10 o'clock in the morning. Joe said, I put that gun to my mouth. Uh, and he said, I can still feel that cold steel in my mouth. I was going to kill myself. But he said, I laid the gun down, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And Joe Kowalski became one of the greatest witnesses uh, in our part of the country, and thank God that he did. Oh, my friend, are you listening to me? I'm talking about, listen to me, I'm talking about suicide's not the answer. Oh no, killing yourself. Somebody said, well, they got out of it all. No. Many people get caught in sin. They get caught stealing money or whatever. They'll go pull the trigger. And they said, boy, that's the way out. No, no, no. If you die, you go to hell, my friend, if you're lost. And then you're begging for mercy and you're in torments and you're crying and you're in fire. Wish I could make you understand that. We shall make you understand that verse number 24, the rich man said, I am tormented in this flame. Verse number 25, he said, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Oh, you're tormented. Then, then in verse number 28, he said, lest they also come into this place of torment. Rich man called it a place of torment. I've got family members right now that I'm unsure about. And my mind goes back and I think about it quite often these days as I get to be an older man and realize that life is getting short. I think about some of my family members. And I think about my failure to witness to them even as a teenager and as a young man. I went all over everywhere singing. I sung in revival meetings, sung in churches. Me and my brother did. And we were respected. We had a good life. We, 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 we were living it up. We are enjoying being saved. But I failed as a preacher. I failed to witness. Then God called me to preach. And as a young preacher, I was so concerned about my ministry that I forgot about people going to hell. My friend, did you know you can get so concerned about your ministry and your church and your legacy and what you're going to leave behind? Hogwash and pickle juice on that. We ought, to, we ought to get concerned about men and women. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I preach in Tennessee on the radio. And I preach in North Carolina. I preach in South Carolina. I preach in Indiana. I preach in Illinois. I preach in Kentucky. I preach in Florida. I preach in Georgia. I preach all over this country by internet. I've never met you, but I don't want to see you go to hell today. I'm witnessing to, a, to a lot, my, my market-wise is millions of people every day that I reach on radio, by, if you count the market-wise. And I don't know how many people is listening, but I tell you today, there's a hell, and I don't want you to go there. And God don't want you to go there. I want to see you get saved. I want to see you get saved. Did you know they say that hell is one of the hardest messages a preacher can preach on? They say preaching on the blood and hell are the two hardest things on your retinas and your eyes. 
Now, I've heard that. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but they say that's right. Hell is a real place. Number five, can I give you this about hell? You will have your memory on hell. Verse number 25, Abraham said to him, he said, but son, he said, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivedest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus his evil things. You're going to have your, the sad part about it is you're going to have your memory in hell. You're going to have your, I, I, I believe if the man dies with Alzheimer's, I, I, I believe he's going to have his memory in hell. I believe, I, I believe this. If my cousin's in hell today, and there's a pretty good chance by his own testimony that he is. But he walked out of that church that day lost when he heard me preach on hell. Now, I didn't do everything I could to win him. And I didn't go back when God told me to. And I got blood on my hands. But at least he heard the gospel. And I'm going to say this to you, friend. He's in hell today. And I tell you, if he could take that service back in that little storefront building where I started a church, if he could take that service back, I, I believe he'd run to that altar. And I believe he'd get saved by the grace of God. No more chances in hell now. He's in hell now. He's in there. He's in hell now. And so you're going to have your memory in hell. I believe you're going to remember every... You, you, some of you are going to remember this. You may be riding down the road. You may be getting a little part of the message and then you lose the... And you say, I heard this preacher. I don't even know where he was from. But he was crying on the radio and he was warning people not to go to hell. Young people, you can sit and laugh at me all you want to. But one second in hell, you won't be laughing. You'll hear my radio voice beaming in your ears. There's a hell. You better get saved. I'm telling you, I'd run right now. Listen, if you don't know how to, I'd run for the nearest preacher I could find. I'd get saved. I'd be scared to live another minute. Lost. I'd be afraid my heart would quit beeping, beat, beating. Number six, I want to give you this. What keeps a man from hell? I want to give you what, let, let, me, let me show you something in Luke 16, 27. The Bible said, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him, talking about Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. The rich man's trying to get Abraham to send Lazarus to his brethren. Notice what he said. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. You know what Abraham's saying? They got the word of God. Moses is a type of the law. And the prophets, it's the Old Testament. That's all they had at that time. You got the entire Bible. He said they got the Bible. Now notice what the rich man said right here. The rich man said what a lot of you preachers are saying today. This is what the rich man said. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead... They will repent. In other words, if we just had a phenomenon, if we just had a gimmick, if we just had a trick, how many of you, how many of you today, if we could say uh, next Sunday, in, uh, in your church next Sunday, the rich man's going to rise from hell and he's going to preach. How many ring people go to church next Sunday? You know what that is? That's a gimmick. That's a trick. God's not in that. God's not in that. Let me tell you, you know, you know, what, you know what Abraham said, son? Or he said, he said, he said to him, he said, they got Moses and the prophets. He said, and he said, he said, nay, Father Abraham, he's arguing with him. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. That's what some of you preachers say. Well, if I can just get a gimmick, if I can just find some way to trick them, if I can just lay a Bible at the door and let them walk over the Bible, if I can just trick them some way, you don't have to trick people to get saved. You can't make anybody get saved. I can't make you. There's some of you right now. You'll listen to me. You'll die and go to hell. But I'll promise you this, I've delivered my soul to you and I love you. I, I'll stand in eternity in the, white, in the white throne judgment as a spectator. And I'll be there because the Bible said I'll ever be with the Lord and He'll be there. And I'll be there to watch you get judged. But I'll tell you one thing you can't do. You can't point your finger at me and say, I heard you on the radio and you never warned me about hell. You can't do it. There's not a one of you can say that because I've warned you. You know what, you know what the last verse says? This is what Abraham said. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one went, or though one rose from the dead. Let me tell you something, friend. There's no gimmick or trick going to get you saved. I'll tell you what will get you saved is hearing the plain Word of God from the King James Bible. Hearing a preacher say, you need to get saved. Young people, what about it? Oh, you say everybody thinks I'm saved. Does it really matter what people think? 
Let me, see, let, me, let me give you one more here, at least. Let me give you number seven. You don't have to go to hell. You do not have to go to hell today. There's not a one of you listening to me that has to go. The Bible said this in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast years ago. I ain't got nothing wrong with some southern gospel music, some of it, if, if, it's, if it's the right kind. But I witnessed to a southern gospel singer several years ago, and this is what the man told me. He said, Preacher, I try to do everybody right. That's not the way to go to heaven. Listen, you can't do everybody right if you tried. That's not the way to go to heaven. The Bible said, not of works, lest any man should boast for by grace, or you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It ain't of you. It ain't what you give to the church. I know a professional in his field. I'm not going to say what field he was in. I'm not going to say if he is a baseball player, if he's a soccer player. I'm not going to say what he was. But I have, I have good information on this, that he gave a church. He did a large deed for a church. And he told him, he said, you better not ever tell anybody I did this for you. That man died a little while after that. I'm not putting that man in heaven. I'm not putting that man in hell. But I'm going to say this. I sure hope that man did not think that his deed would take him to heaven. Listen, works will never get you there. I had a man one time. He misquoted some scripture in the book of Revelation. And the Bible said they're going to be judged by their, according to their works. But it's talking about the lost will be judged according to their works and what they've done. But he misinterpreted that. I was on the street in Elkin, North Carolina. We were going to preach on the street. My, one, of my, one of the preacher men out of my church said, Pastor said, if you want me to, I'll go first and kind of show you what we do. And, then, and I said, that'll be fine because I never preached on the street like they were doing. I said, it'll be fine. So I let him go first. I was sitting there and he, he wasn't doing it out of disrespect to me. He, was just, he just showed me how, how, how they did it. And I said, that's fine. And God had me to sit there. God, and so this man come by. He said, you Ricky Cothran? And I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, I hear you every week and he told me what radio station the local radio station i was on still on that station to this day i'm still there i've been there for years he said i listen to you every sunday on this station and he threw i never forget this as long as i live it's almost scary he threw a 20 dollar bill at me threw it at me he said put that on your radio broadcast he said i heard you say that works won't take a man to heaven i'm gonna prove to you i'll work my way to heaven oh i thought man you're blaspheming god you're scared he walked off before i could give him the 20 dollar bill by him he was gone I guess I could have hollered at him, but I mean, he got gone quick. A few months later, that man died. I put the $20 in the radio ministry. But friend, by that man's own testimony, he busted hell wide open. And I believe every time he throws that $20 in hell, I believe it bounces back in his hand. He throws it and it bounces. In, I, mean, I mean, spiritually, I, I believe in his memory. I believe he throws that $20, it comes back in his hand. I believe he's in hell throwing $20 bills. I, 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 not, not literally, but I, I believe in his mind. He said, I worked my way. I worked my way. Oh, but I can't work my way. I believe he remembers that day that he walked up to that little church van and threw that $20 at a little, just a little blind preacher. My friends, you can make fun of God all you want to. But I'll tell you one thing, one second in hell, you won't be making fun of God. Now, you preachers can do what you want to. I'm not telling you how to pastor your churches. Please don't get mad at me. But friend, don't you get mad at me. I don't preach a message that what I don't give an invitation. I don't care how many. I, I preach I preached the other day to five people. I preach the other day. Do you listen to me? I preached the other day to five people. And I had somebody come play on that piano and give an invitation. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. We, we'd better be trying to get people saved. Listen, I, I, I believe we ought to be concerned about missions. And I'm for that. And I thank God for it. And I, I'm a missionary. I'm supported by churches. But I'll tell you right now, just don't let missions become a big business. Let's don't see how many missionaries we can support. Let's see how many God will allow us to support. Let's don't brag about how, many, how much missions money we give. Let's see if we can get our neighbors saved on our street. Giving money to missions does not excuse the local church from not winning souls. You say, well, preacher, we've had a crowd that's going around, they've did this and did that. It does not make any difference. It don't excuse the local church from trying to get people saved. I tell you, the local church needs to be trying to get their family in, your friends in. You need to try to get them saved. That's what you need to be doing. In the, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you saved? I've tried to be as plain as I can. Jesus died for your sin. You was born a sinner. You can't help that. I mean, you came in this world a sinner. And the only way you get rid of that sin is you ask Jesus Christ to save you. And you believe with all your heart and you turn your life over to Him. You say, Preacher, I, I had a man tell me this the other day. 
He was witnessing to a person that had lived a very, very wicked life. And he was witnessing this person, and this person said, I can't give it up. I just, he told them how to be saved. They said, I can't give it up. One second in hell, the drugs won't mean anything. The immoral relationships won't mean anything. The liquor won't mean anything. You pull that trigger on that gun, young person, if you're not saved, it won't end it all. It'll begin it all. Jesus Christ is your answer. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you ask Him to save you today? Friend, if you're not sure of your salvation, contact me and let me help you. I got a letter in the mail many years ago from a southern state. And it said, Dear Preacher, would you tell an old drunk woman how to get saved? As the best letter I ever got in my life, I sat in my office, dictated a letter back to my secretary, and, and told that woman. I don't know if she ever got saved or not, but I told her how. Our Heavenly Father, I don't enjoy preaching on hell. It's not my favorite thing to do. Lord, this will not win me any medals. And I, I, won't, I don't think I'll get in revival meetings as a result of this message. And I, Lord, I ain't trying for that. Lord, I'm trying to help somebody. There's a teenager lost. They're going to die and go to hell, Lord. There's teenagers just like that young boy didn't even know about the church skating in the parking lot. He didn't know. Lord, he didn't know. God, would you save him today? Would you save people like that? Help these teenagers. God, there's truck drivers like this young man. And Lord, he had no ideas going out into eternity. I've lived 20,070 days of today. I have no promise of the 71st day tomorrow. I have no promise of that. But God, I know if I die right here, right now, I know it won't be a band of demons. I know it'll be a band of angels that'll usher me into the presence of God Almighty. Lord, I pray that others will have that same uh, 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 knowing, Lord, and that same assurance. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, Lord, help them to realize they don't have to go to hell. You made a way for them. And help them to realize that, Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Lord, you are the way, and surely you are the truth. And Lord, you are the life. I'm enjoying good life, eternal life, because of you. In Jesus' name, amen.